Our dear students, today we will see a new topic called as semiconductor devices. So our main topic today will be semiconductor devices. And now we are going to study various types of semiconductor or devices like a diode, transistor, FET, MOS FET and all. Now, before going into what is a semiconductor, we should know what is the matter, what is the smallest particle of that matter, what is the smallest part of that matter. So, smallest part of any matter is called as an atom. So, atom will be the small part or the small element of any matter. Now, what is that atom and what is an atomic structure? This is the first point what you should know whenever we are studying what do we mean by semiconductor or devices okay so if you see an atom and in that if you see an atomic structure atomic structure okay if you take an example of an atom say for example silicon we will take a very important semiconductor material called as silicon if you see the atomic structure of the silicon now Atomic structure, the central part in an atomic structure is called as nucleus. It's called as nucleus. This is nucleus. Nucleus will contain protons and neutrons. It will contain number of protons and neutrons. Where protons are positively charged particles and neutrons are neutral, they are electrical neutral. So as a whole, the nucleus is a positive, positively charged center or the core. It is a positively charged part. It is a center part. It is a positively charged part because you are having protons which are positively charged particles. Now in an atomic structure, Around the nucleus, you will be having something called as orbits. So you will be having orbits. First orbit, second orbit, third orbit. So you will be having orbits. Now in this orbits, electrons will be revolving. In this orbits, there will be electrons which are negatively charged particles. Now, if you see the silicon atomic structure, it should have 14 electrons. It should have 14 electrons in the orbits. Now, the way in which the electrons are placed in the orbit follows the formula 2n square. Follows the formula 2n square, where n is the number of the orbit. If you, in the first orbit, if you see, this will be 2 into 1 square, which is equal to 2. In the second orbit, you will see it will be 2 into 2 square, which will be equal to 8. In the third orbit, you will be seeing 2 into 2 cube, which will be 16. Okay. So if you are having 14 electrons for a silicon atom, then in the first orbit, you are having 2 electrons. In the second orbit, you are having 8 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 plus 2 is 10. So our remaining are 4. So in the last orbit, you are having 4 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Now every single orbit will have a specific energy associated with it. The first orbit will have a specific energy associated with it. Similarly, the electrons in that orbit will also have that specific energy. In the second also, you will be having a specific energy. And electrons in that orbit will also have their own specific energy. So energy is specific for the electrons for that particular orbit. So the inner orbit and the outer orbit. Say for example from the inner orbit if an electron wants to move to the outer orbit. Then it has to gain or absorb some energy. If it gains or absorbs some energy then it can go to a little more outer orbit so from here if it want to go to, from first if it want to go to the second orbit it has to absorb energy similarly if it has to come from the second to first 
are coming inside, then it will release energy. This can be in the form of heat or light. So, if you are absorbing energy, you are going to the higher orbit. If you are releasing energy, you are coming to the lower orbit. That is one concept which you should know about electrons. Okay. Now here, these electrons are negatively charged particles. So, as a whole, if you see the atomic structure, the protons which are present in the nucleus are positively charged particles. And the number of protons which are present in the nucleus will be always equal to the number of electrons which are present in the orbits. That means the positive charge at the center will be equal to negative charge in the orbits. That means positive and negative are same and as a whole the atom is electrically neutral. Electrically neutral. Okay. So this is what is very important. It is electrically neutral. It is not positive or negative. It is electrically neutral. Then the number of electrons will decide the atomic number. Say for example in this silicon we are having two electrons in the first orbit, eight electrons in the second orbit, four electrons in the third orbit. So it is total number of 14 electrons. So 14 electrons, 14 decides the atomic number of silicon. Okay. Similarly, if you want to see the atomic weight, then it is number of protons and neutrons, what you have in the nucleus will decide the atomic weight of an atom. Clear. Now here, this is an atomic structure where the electrons in the inner orbit are very, very tightly associated or very tightly re related with the nucleus. They are very much attached with the nucleus. But as you come ahead, if you see the last orbit electrons, they will be a little loosely attached with the nucleus. The attraction force will be a little loose, a little less. So these, the outermost electrons are always called as valence electrons. Because if you apply some external force, these outermost electrons can be taken out from the atomic structure. And that is an important concept when we study semiconductor devices. Clear? So the electrons in the outermost orbit which are loosely attached with the nucleus, they are not very tight, they are not very strongly attached. So these electrons in the outermost orbit are called as valence electrons. Okay, And these are the electrons which will play an important role when we study what is semiconductor.